Hello, dear viewers. It's time for another walk through the world of Professor Tolkien's Middle-earth. Today, I want to present an overview of Middle-earth as it was not at the time of the beginning of the Ringwraith's march to the fire event of Aradruin, but a thousand years before that. I will try to make a general overview based on the chronology of the Legendarium of Middle-earth. I think it'll be interesting. Let's get started. All works about the world of Arda, as well as drafts, sketches, internal chronology, named by Tolkien himself the Legendarium of Middle-earth. The professor has thought out a clear chronology and sequence of events in this legendarium. A thousand years before Frodo's march, according to the chronology of Middle-earth, was the 2018th year of the Third Age of the World. Let us look in detail at what was there and briefly compare it with what became a thousand years later. Let's start with the northwest of Middle-earth. In the region of Linden, between the sea and the Blue Mountains, lived the remnants of the Elves, the Eldar, the Sindar, and the Noldor. The heyday of the immortal people in Middle-earth had long since ended. Many of the Elves fell in numerous wars with Morgoth and Sauron. Many went beyond the sea, to the land of the Immortals Valinor. The High Elves of Middle-earth from Linden were ruled by Curdan the Shipwright, that saw the still young world before the creation of the sun and moon. By and large, a thousand years later, in Frodo's time, the lives of the Linden Elves had not particularly changed. The only thing is that many of them had left Middle-earth in the meantime and migrated to the west across the sea. West of the Grey Harbors of Linden, on the other side of the Blue Mountains, there had already existed a thousand years ago a country of hobbits, the very Shire. They had settled this small country as far back as four hundred years ago. Since then, they had lived quietly and peacefully in the Shire, formerly subjects of King Arthedon. The catastrophe of the fall of the last shard of Arnor, the hobbits survived quietly. Instead of a king, they now chose Thane, who formally ruled the entire hobbit country. In general, the hobbits lived the next millennium in this format. It was only after Saruman's defeat in the Great Game that the Shire was briefly taken over by his servants. But that is another story altogether. To the northeast and east of the Shire was the ruined Arnor. In the 2018th year of the Third Age, this state had not existed for decades. In the 1974th year of the Third Age, the last shard of the northern Dúnedain kingdom ceased to exist. For over a thousand years, Arnor had already been divided into three smaller kingdoms, Arthedain, Cardolan, and Rador. All this time they have been periodically feuding with each other. Added to this were the constant wars between the Arnorians and the blackguard kingdom Ongmar. By the year in question, Radar had long and firmly fallen into dependence on Ongmar. The Angmarans and Radurians descended upon Arthedon, Cardolan devastated earlier, and defeated the kingdom. The remnants of the Dúnedain of the north fled to the far north of Middle-earth. Help came from the south. Prince Erner of Gondor brought a large army by sea. He was joined by the elves of Linden. The Angmar army was defeated and the kingdom of the Witchblade itself ceased to exist. The Witchblade king went into hiding, only to reappear a few years later in the south, in Mordor. The northern Dúnedain could no longer revive Arnor. They became pathfinders, the protectors of the north. The kings of Art Eden, descended from Elendil and Isildur, became the leaders of the Pathfinders. It is from this dynasty that Aragorn, son of Arathorn, one of the central characters of the Lord of the Rings, descends. For the next thousand years, the northern Dúnedain would live secretly in settlements within Old Arnor, guarding and protecting the north. Further northeast, at the foot of the Misty Mountains, stood the ancient elven settlement of Rivendell. By the 2018th year of the Third Age, it was already a very old outpost of the Elves of the West, some 3,700 years old. During this time Rivendell had been ruled by Elrond Half-Elf, son of Arendel the Seafarer and Princess Elwing of Doriath. In the 2018th year of the Third Age, his daughter, Arwen Undemil, was over 1,700 years old. As we know, Rivendell was still intact at the time of the formidable events of the War of the Ring. Let's head south from Rivendell. Beneath a single pass in the clay mountains that connects Eriador and the forested region of Lorien, 
and beneath three mighty mountain peaks, the underground dwarven state of Khazad-dum, or Moria, thrived for many millennia. A few years after the crushing of Arthedon in the north, the dwarves of Moria, in search of the true silver, Mifril, in the deep mines of the mountains, awakened the Balrog. The king of Moria and many of his subjects fell. The surviving dwarves of Moria fortify themselves far to the north, in the Grey Mountains and Train, heir to the dead king of Khazad-dum, founds the kingdom of the foothills east of the Grey Mountains, beneath Mount Erebor. This is the very same kingdom that would be destroyed centuries later by the dragon smog. A thousand years before Frodo's quest, the king of the dwarves lived in either Erebor or the Grey Mountains. But dragons and orcs drove the dwarves first out of the Grey Mountains and then out of Erebor, and only a small settlement further east, in the Iron Hills, survived. Its king, Dane Ironfoot, became Thorin Dubshit's heir in the reborn kingdom of the foothills. But that will come later, but for now, refugees from Moria are taking root in the Grey Mountains and Erebor. A little further south, in the upper Anjuan Valley, in the same years that the kingdom of Arnor fell and the Balrog dispersed the dwarves from Moria, people from the steppe plains adjoining Mirkwood to the south appeared. They began to call the new land of habitation Eophiad. The inhabitants of Eophiad were brave warriors and skillful horse breeders. According to the legends, the leader who led the people of Eophiad northward was named Frumgar. His son Frum defeated the huge and vicious dragon Scat, but quarreled with the dwarves of the Grey Mountains, who were arriving en masse from Moria in these years. The dwarves made demands for some of the dragon's treasure, but Fram laughed at them. The dwarves took revenge on the chieftain by killing him. Five hundred years later, an Eophiad chieftain named Young Jorl would come to the aid of the dying Gundor army, for which he would receive from the viceroys of Gundor the desolate province of Kalinarden. Thus the kingdom of Rohan would be born. Let's move southeast of Eophiad, across the Anjuan River. In the southern part of the great forest region, called in ancient times the Great Mirkwood, there was a fortress called Dol Gulder, where Sauron secretly gained strength. It would not be until three to four decades later that suspicions would arise that the Lord of Darkness was hiding in the Greenwood. By the time of Frodo's quest, Sauron has left Dol Gulder and is openly declared in Mordor. Though Dol Gulder continues to be a fortress of dark forces, to the north of Mirkwood lives a people of wood elves. They were ruled all through the Third Age by Thranduil, son of Orifer of the elven nation of Sindar. A thousand forests later, the elves still lived in the north of Mirkwood, as reflected in The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. West and south, between the Emelwyan Mountains and the Great Anjuan River, is the elven forest of Lorien. A thousand years before the events of The Lord of the Rings, Amroth, ruler of the Lorien elves, perished in the Bay of Belfalas, separated from his beloved Nimrodel. Galadriel and Celeborn, elves of high lineage, became the guardians and protectors of the elves of Lorien. And so it was a thousand years later. Moving on. As mentioned, it was another five hundred years before the creation of Rohan. The southern kingdom of Númenor was ruled by King Irnil. Although his son Erner had defeated the sorcerous northern state of the blacksmith Ongmar easily enough, the situation of the southern kingdom of the Númenorians was difficult. For 150 years before the date in question, Gundor had been engaged in heavy wars in the east and south. The current King Irnil was one of the warlords who had saved Gundor from the invasion of the southern Herodrim and the eastern nomads, the Easterlings. King Andocher and his heirs fell in the north of Athelion in battle with the Easterlings. Irnil, on the other hand, commanded another Gundor Arimia, which defeated the invading Herodrim in southern Athelion. While the Easterlings were celebrating their victory over the royal army, Ernil's army crossed Athelion and descended upon the nomads. The enemy was defeated. Irnil was related to the royal dynasty. The nobili of Gundor proclaimed him the next ruler and crowned him at Minas Tirith. As mentioned, King Irnil sent an army north to aid the Arnorians of Arthedon. But the aid fell short, though the king's son Yerner was able to defeat Ongmar. In the future, 
Yerner would leave no heirs and the burden of ruling Gondor would be taken by the viceroys. However, the witch king of Angmar retreated to Dol Guldur and then secretly crossed into Mordor. No one in Middle-earth realized that Sauron was hiding under the guise of the witch king of Angmar. He was painstakingly gathering his forces and plotting the revival of his power. Angmar's war against the Arnorians in the north and the attacks of the Easterlings and Haradians on Gondor were links in the chain the Black Lord was forging. At this time, multiplying orcs began to sneak into the land of Mordor. In the year 2002, an army of orcs led by the Nazgul descended upon Ithilien. The capital of Ithilien, the fortress of Minas Ithil, falls. It becomes Minas Morgul, a sinister citadel of evil. Remember the army coming out of it at Minas Tirith in Peter Jackson's film adaptation. Most of Athelion's population was forced to evacuate beyond the Anjuan to the west. Since then, Athelion has become a no-man's land, where Athelion scouts, who are something akin to Nordic trackers, operate. I think I've covered everything. As you can see from the review, it was a thousand years ago that Middle-earth began to take the form familiar to readers and viewers of P. Jackson's screen version. Sauron, who had returned to the world after his defeats on the field of Daggerlad and during the siege of his fortress Baradur by the armies of the Last Alliance, Sauron was defeated and disembodied, but did not disappear completely, had already begun his active actions. Moria is ravaged and Erebor is founded. The Vala messengers from the West Gandalf, Saruman, and Radagast have been active in Middle Earth for a thousand years. Arthedon is ravaged and the remnants of the Arnorians have become pathfinders. Gondor loses almost all the lands in the east. That is all for today. What do you think about it? Subscribe and post comments.